Welcome back to the channel, everybody. It's Mark from Cricket Bat Info, and I've got a blast from the past. I'm really excited to show you this bat. This is the XP70. Have a look at it. Look at that high middle. That is just a lovely bat. So these were only made for one season. This has come in from Angelo. He's purchased it recently. He doesn't actually play cricket. He just sort of gets around with his mates and goes to the nets every now and then. He did buy that Rob Pack that I would have shown you. He's got the bug. So he's managed to find one of these and it looks in pretty mint condition. It does say $400 there, $499 and $400 sale. Um, but it's actually not a bad looking bat. It's actually in really good condition. I mean, when I compare this for a 2016 bat to the Alpha, which was bashed and whatever coming from England. It's a little bit different. Heartwood down the right hander's outside edge. Uneven grains, but there's a little bit of darkness through them. Remember, this has lost its its uh, sort of new finish sitting on the shelf for so long. Uh, I've got a grain here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten grains. Very nice. Natural finish. These were made in Australia. I'm trying to get some light and you can see those grains through the toe. But I mean, the feature of this bat is just that stunning spine. I really love the look of these bats. They just were just so out there. It's like jaws hunting you down. So yeah, and there was an even bigger one. There was the XP80 that came out around the same time. So I've done some research and I'll switch over to that now just to show you. First thing is the Wayback Wayne engine shows me 27th of December, 2016. I've got the XP70 here and the XP80. The XP80 had a much, much bigger spine, 80 mil as opposed to 70 mil. And it was also a much thinner toe. I did actually review an XP80. It was one of the first reviews I ever did. And I'll let's see, there you go, 6th of August, 2016. Um, this is actually uh, the bat that was owned by my mate Pedro. Um, and it was obviously done in my office. And yeah, I actually had the mallet then, there you go. Don't know why I was knocking it that way. Probably did a ball bounce and um, yeah, at least you get to see the, the shape there. But those days I was more concentrating on photo albums. So if you go to my Facebook page and you have a look at the photos, you'll see an album section. And these were actually his bats. He had a XP70, he had an XP80 and he had a silver. They were all three of his bats there. And I did a picture there of a cricket ball. Maybe if I blow that up for you, uh, sitting next to the spine of the XB80. They were just outrageous. But just look how little wood there was down at that toe. So yeah, that was just, just how it peaked like that. It was out of this world. Uh, what did he have? He had a 1200 XP70, a 2000 XP80 and a silver. And that had not, they were not pretty nice grains. In fact, the XP70 had less grains than this, but more even. And you can see there he it would have knocked and oiled that bat. This one he actually gave to me to knock, so that's why you've got that video. Back to the way back when engine, you can see here those thumbnails, they won't actually show any pictures. Uh, but high profile, even bow, light pickup, large edges, not really. And it says here the 850 was $389. So on the sale price, Angelo, I think you paid $10 more. But yeah, it's a rare bat anyway. So that 650 was 250 and then the, the other one was 600. But that was, you know, that was 2016. Look how much prices have gone up now where, you know, the top of the line bat was, was $600. Now you're gonna be paying $900, 950. I don't, I don't know, it's, it's just going out of control. So less than 10 years and there's almost 30% increase in pricing. Do like these bats. These had really nice, good quality grips. That's the zone plus grip from memory. And it's still in really good nick. Underneath here, this is when they were still doing binding. It says 210 written there. 
and the typical thin inserts that you see on Australian grey nickels bats so and the thin binding. The stickers themselves are embossed or textured. They're, they're textured. There's a honeycomb texture there. Uh, black and white and this is actually embossed here, grey nickels. You can see that there. The XP70 is embossed in the silver. It'll be horrible on the camera so I'll try and hold that at different angles for you. And this says superior grade 2 willow. Uh, but that looks pretty good to me. I think that would actually be a nice bat. Uh, and it says that they're, they're big edges. So, you know, 2016, we've been going through a bit of a time warp lately with bats, which I've really enjoyed. Let's see what they were in 2016, because in 2000, what was it, seven? It was a 25 millimeter edge Puma Gilchrist top of the line. And this is 28. Might as well do the dimensions while I'm here. 14.3, 41.4. So that means that this is a really nice oval handle here up into semi-oval, but more pronounced oval, typical of the Australian made ones. Uh, this one is definitely Australian made one. You've got the grade A willow here and they've only got their letter in a circle, not in a square. And that's an S. If you go back through your letters, we're in Z this year. That's how far back we are. How thick were the toes? 19.7 and uh, I think that was 25. It just slipped. Yeah, 25. Let's put it through the gauge before we do anything else because we know it's not going to fit through the gauge. And bang, it gets stuck right there. That's how big the spine is. So this is pre-regs. I don't want to make a dent there. And let's look at the face camber. Face camber looks to be close to five mil. So that's pretty much spot on. So definitely looking at about a 70 mil spine. Uh, the width of the bat does look to be uh, slightly narrower even then. And let's just check that out. A little bit of handling damage in the shop there, a few little scratches, nothing really to worry about. But yeah, really keen to see what that actual spine meshes. Because I didn't have one of these back then. I would have calipered it. I'm going to measure all the way up here in a really high position. 68.2, let's see if it goes higher. 67.6. point three, so right there is the peak so that far up the blade it's a great design because what you do is you put all that wood up here but then you expand extend the design down into the bottom of the uh, toe uh, extending that lower so you should get good playability but on Australian bouncy wickets particularly on hard wicket this would have been an excellent bat uh, to use uh, if you were hitting that middle that ball would just be traveling uh, meters and meters and meters. It's a good design feature, but unfortunately now because we're stuck with this, you're not going to get the full benefit of of such a high spine up up uh, high. So now width, let's do that. 107.9. Nothing wrong with it. It's all good. Let's give the pickup test because I haven't held one on these for ages. Yeah, it's a really nice pickup. It actually really feels good. Really light swing, so you could really play late much later with this bat. I, I would describe that as a 2.9, under 2.9 feel. Let's see if it's picked up any weight. I know it said 2.10 underneath the handle. What does it actually weigh? Oh, to 11.4, interesting. I've been way off with my pickup lately. I haven't been playing cricket, that's why. Now I did promise you at some stage in the past that I would start doing a beer review but I only bought like a carton of beer today. So it's a South Australian brewery, Cooper's. The original Pale Ale is probably the most popular Pale Ale in South Australia. It's not a IPA or anything like that. It doesn't have hops or anything like that. And they do brew it in the actual bottle. So you get sediment and you can sort of twist it around and get the cloudiness if you want. So cheers. Yeah, 
Yeah, and you can see the, um, I don't know if you can see. Oh, I'm not buying more cameras just to do bloody beer reviews. That's what I do. I drink and I know things. And I'm sort of celebrating that I've actually filmed. This is my fourth review I've filmed today. We've had some shit weather lately and it's really been pissing me off, I've got to tell you. Not just because you can't get out, but you just can't film out here if it's too windy or it's wet or anything like that. So I did all the B-roll today after many, many tries of doing reviews this week. Finally got the microphone set up and I'm really, really happy. Let's tap this sucker up. It just looks... I mean, the XP80 looks even more outrageous, doesn't it? Bats like this, really, really nice and and sculptured and, and had some character about the shape. And unfortunately, I, I still think the gauge has sort of ruined that. So good on you, MCC. Good on you, Ricky Ponting. You were part of that. Starting at the toe. Feels hard. Oh, now we're getting somewhere. Not really. Oh, now, there you go, have a look at that. Mid-low, it's just starting to ping. Now it's really starting. And it's just going crazy there. And it's going all the way to the stickers. So nothing really... Well, you've still got something there, to be honest. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, I really like that. Uh, Grey Nichols Australia really do press bats really well. And you can see the edges has been boned. So yeah, thank you so much, Angelo, for, he's local to me, bringing that bat in, bringing back some nice memories. Well, not actually with the XP80, because I didn't knock the toe of that bat properly. And me and Pete went out to the Nets first time I gave it to him. We're both having a use of our bats. And Pete just absolutely tries to launch a Yorker well, it wasn't massive, but it was a big dent in the toe when I looked at it, because I'm the, was the guy who knocked it, and I just went, oh, it wasn't cracked, but I just, from that point onwards, I knocked toes properly, and I felt really bad. I thought I'd got it done properly, but I hadn't. But yeah, XP80 brings back that memory. <laughs> These weren't, weren't that popular, I don't know why, because people just got sidetracked on edges. You know, they're, I think the year before was the E41, so. Yeah, hard to top that. You can go back and have a look at the Wayback When engine and click through that particular page. Have a look at all the great designs we had around that time before we got uh, decimated in late 2017 or 2018 with the, with the gauge. Yeah, this is just regulations. It's what we play within, like the handle technology. I, I don't like seeing innovation stifled, but I don't really want to see anybody have a ridiculous advantage whether it be the bowler or the batsman. So I can understand that. And I also don't want to see an arms race on bats like we had with the with the massive big edge, Grey Nichols bats, with everybody trying to get a bigger and bigger edge. That was unsustainable. So there you go. Thank you very, very much, Angelo, for supplying that bat and uh, taking me down memory lane. It hasn't never been used. And it's just great to see these types of bats that are iconic and document them on camera for you so you can see exactly what they were like. Really, really cool. We'll see you on the next video, everybody. If you like what I do, subscribe, hit the like button, comment. I'm definitely always in the comments, uh, but definitely hit the like button. Try and help me out uh, by getting this content to more people or share it, do whatever. Otherwise, I'm just never going to record another bloody video. That's, that's how it's going to be. Sorry. Anyway, we'll see you on the next video. See you, everyone.